typically I send about 300 letters a month. I have about 3% response rate. So about maybe nine to 10 people will call me and out of that 10, maybe one or two might be serious. So it's really a numbers game. And then on top of that, it compounds because sometimes people will call me to this day for letters I sent out almost a year and a half ago. Because wow. they throw it in a dresser and all of a sudden they find it. So, you know, because of that, you know, I shared my journey about direct mailing campaign and it almost came to the point where people were asking me, hey, Steven, can you just do it for me? <laughs> so now I kind of do offer that service where I would do a direct mailing campaign for people and all they have to do is just pick up their phone. Welcome to the How to Scale Commercial Real Estate Show. Whether you are an active or passive investor, we'll teach you how to scale your real estate investing business into something big. Stephen Nguyen has scaled from zero to 90 units in five years while working a full-time job as a pharmacy director, and he's done it completely without partners and on his own. Stephen, welcome to the show. Hey, Sam. Happy to be on and to share my journey. Absolutely. Stephen, I'm looking forward to this. There are three questions I ask every guest who comes on the show. In 90 seconds or less, can you tell me where did you start, where are you now, and how did you get there? So currently, I've been working full-time as a pharmacy director for about 10 years now. Um, when I graduated, I made $250,000 in student debt. So out the gate, I just said, wow, I'm $250,000 in debt. Grinded for four or five years to pay off that student loan, which was humongous. But after I paid that off, I said, well, what's next, right? I just paid off this massive student debt. So the natural progression was to start off a single family homes. So that's exactly what I did. I used something called house hacking. So I bought a house with 10% down, lived in the master bedroom, and I rented out the three other bedrooms that were vacant. So that was $3,000 a month. And from there, that covered my mortgage. So I just had to cover my property tax insurance and utilities. So I was living for $1,500 a month in California, which is pretty good, uh, especially in like San Francisco area. And my goal was to do this one single family home a year for 10 years. And after year three, I quickly realized that this was not sustainable. In California, you don't cash flow. It's purely appreciation. You're lucky to break even despite self-managing. So once again, that was another sticking point. How do I scale from here and make more cash flow? That's when I learned about uh, apartment complexes and started a direct mentally campaign. So I sent out a bunch of letters to Oklahoma City, about 1,800 letters, 300 a month for six months. And from, the, from that direct mentally campaign, I got my two first apartment complexes. I got a 26 unit in Oklahoma City and a 20 unit in Oklahoma within about six months of sending these letters out. And... It just completely blew my mind. The moment I learned that apartments were based on the NOI divided by the market cap rate versus single family, it's based on the sales comparable. Right. For single family, it doesn't matter how much rent you get. You can get one single family can get 10,000. The one next door can get 5,000. They're both worth the same. Correct. But with apartment complexes, the more income you have, you force depreciation. Right. So you have cash flow and appreciation. Once I learned that, I, my mind was blown. I just said, you know what? I need to go to the apartments. And... What was crazy was in Oklahoma City, the apartment was $500,000 for my 26 unit and $350,000 for my 20 unit. And that's cheaper than a condo in California. Like literally a condo in California costs more than that. My single family homes were close to a million each. Mm -hmm. And I just said, wow, I'm getting more cash flow. It's cheaper. And after I do my value add strategy, I can double or triple the value by right. doubling or tripling the rents. So that's when I started to scale massively during COVID. So that started during 2021 when mm -hmm. it was a hot real estate market. But because I did a direct mailing campaign, I was able to get these deals off market and work direct of owner and negotiate. And then from there, it led me down the rabbit hole of mobile home parks where I basically started sending letters out to mobile home park owners. And, and same thing. I was able to get a 200 lot mobile home park in Alabama, uh, about 40 uh, lots occupied, 160 lots uh, vacant. And... You know, same thing. I got for a million dollars or 1.1 and I was able to negotiate seller financing because the owner owned it free and clear. And I was able to build that trust and, and leverage my skills as a pharmacist. So I know that was pretty fast there, but that's kind of how I, I scaled from zero to 90 units in, in five years, started off in single family home. And honestly, in the past year and a half, um, that's when I bought, you know, my two apartment complexes in mobile home park. So all my success was pretty recent, I'd say. That's awesome growth though. I mean... In a, in a very short period of time, and especially being able to do it on your own, you know, without partners, that's that there's a lot of moving pieces there. Direct mail gets a bad rap. 
Yeah. Uh, you know, it takes a lot of time to manage it. It takes a lot of money to send out the mailers. Tell me about, I mean, just how you built the list. I mean, that in and of itself is a bit of a feat in going, okay, how do we narrow this down into the most qualified candidates for whatever it is you're trying to acquire? Can you talk to us yeah. about the process? Yeah. So for my direct mailing list, I use PropStream. And there's a lot of uh, multifamily criteria that you can use. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of off the top of my head, you can click on like commercial real estate, uh, multifamily, uh, 100 plus units, multifamily, five plus units, garden style apartment complex. There's about 10 criteria uh, points that I use. But the key is you want to find an, a sample listing on LoopNet and then put it into PropStream and see how they classify it. Because sometimes each county and each state classifies it differently. And, you know, I will say it's kind of an art, like no matter what list you get, there will always be some inaccuracies. Like even when I sent my letters out, sometimes you have owners calling you duplexes, triplexes, fourplexes, as well as retail strip centers. That's just the nature of the beast. But, you know, that's, that was my first step was the criteria. But what kind of led me to my most success is making a very personalized letter. So my strategy is a bit different. I don't use a postcard. I actually send a A2 envelope. It's an invitation size. So it's almost like a, a thank you card from like a, your friend or family member. Right. And, you know, the, the name address is handwritten. On the back side, um, I put my address and that's where I use my title. So I'm, I'm technically a doctor. So I use Dr. Stephen Nguyen. You know, pharmacists are doctors. <laughs> Not many people know that. Right. Um, and then from there, they open up my letter. Um, and on my letter, I just kind of talk about myself. I don't see, come off as a big syndicator, a big corporation. I just say, Hey, I'm Steven. I'm a pharmacist, been working for 10 years. You know, I own X amount of real estate units and I'm just looking to buy some more real estate so I can provide for my family in the future. You know, just come off very casual, very low key, very humble. Right. You know, I have this humbleness to spy scaling the 90 unit. I try to stay humble. <laughs> um, you know, my girlfriend helps me with that. Um, <laughs> they always and, do. um, from there, you know, basically I just write, Hey, you know, I want to buy, make an offer for your apartment complex. I make it easy, simple, you know, the typical letters that come out there. Oh. And then, but the difference, what I do is I have, you know, handwrite my name and signature and I write a call to action in written. So I'll write, Hey, Sam, call me. This is my phone number. So, you know, this is kind of the strategy that I've honed by doing multiple direct mailing campaigns and. Typically, I send about 300 letters a month. I have about 3% response rate. So about maybe 9 to 10 people will call me. And out of that 10, maybe 1 to 2 might be serious. So it's really a numbers game. And then on top of that, it compounds. Because sometimes people will call me to this day for letters that I sent out almost a year and a half ago. Because wow. they throw it in a dresser and all of a sudden they find it. So, you know, because of that, you know, I shared my journey about direct mailing campaign and it almost came to the point where people were asking me, hey, Steven, can you just do it for me? <laughs> so now I kind of do offer that service where I would do a direct mailing campaign for people and all they have to do is just pick up their phone, um, and respond to a text, respond to an email because I know a lot of people are busy. Yeah, they have kids, families, elderly parents to take care of. But for me, I don't have that yet. So I'm just trying to help people out and, and get their first deal because some of the deals that I bought were just insanely underpriced. Um, by going direct to owner. For sure. What if the, the process of handwriting each of those? I mean, that's a mind numbing process to write 300 handwritten letters. Is there, if you found a way to, I mean, especially if you're doing it for other people, is there, how, how do you scale that? So I actually tried my first myself. It took me eight hours to prepare 300 letters, but I actually outsourced my letters to a company um, called Yell Letters Complete. Okay. And they will actually do the handwritten handwriting for you. So they'll handwrite the address, they'll hand sign my name, and then they'll also handwrite that call to action and also prepare the letters um, in the way I tell them to do it. So because of that, I'm able to kind of leverage a direct mailing campaign and then free myself of the time. Right. So, you know, it, it's people can use that company as well. But even on top of that, some people feel it's overwhelming to like send a list from PropStream as well as your letter template for them. Despite me teaching it, that's why people still reached out to me. Despite me, like basically telling people A through Z how to do a direct mailing campaign, they just still, it sounds very intimidating and it has a bad rap. As you mentioned, most people like to text and email. That's kind of the modern day. Yep. But because of that, direct mail is more effective, especially if you're trying to target a more, you know, mom and pop owner, which I do. Right. So it's highly effective for mom and pop owners. You know, I spend about 
$3,000 for my direct mailing campaign, 1,800 letters. And that made me $300,000 equity day one but for just my two apartment complexes, wow. to be honest. That's a 100x return on my money. Anyone will take that. I, I, like, I like those return profiles. That's, uh, that's not bad. So tell me, you spent you spent three thousand dollars a month, or no? You spent that, oh, that was total, total. three hundred letters a month times, times six months. months, right? Right. Yeah. And so then, so then you're basically at what is that a buck fifty, a buck seventy five a letter, roughly? Yeah, it's about a dollar fifty a letter, and prop trading is about hundred bucks a month. So you know, it's about five hundred bucks a month uh, to do your direct mailing campaign. That's, and like I, mean, I said, yeah. For a very targeted list, I mean, it, you know, I go back to, I mean, all the, all the, all the stuff I get in the mail, you know, for our house here, it's like right where I live, like, Hey, I'll buy your house. I'll buy, which, you know, there was a time in my real estate yeah. career when I did that too. And most of it's just the same thing over and yeah. over and over. I'm like, there is no differentiator between the one letter you put it in the letter and you put it in an envelope, but it's still some, you know, pre-printed you know, we buy houses thing. And then there's an, and then there's postcard that's just it, I, all that stuff. Of course, for me, I'm not looking to sell my house, but I, so I just throw it away. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I think that's why direct mail gets a bad rap. Cause it's just, it's all wash, rinse, repeat the same product coming to the potential seller. And you found a unique way, unique way to scale that. How did you build? I know you said you use prop stream to build the list. What gave you, what gave you the idea of, you know, pivoting and going after mobile home parks, especially, I mean, there's, it, it's a big country. How did yeah. you Alabama and say, you know what, I'm going to put this one in Alabama, one of my 300 potentials on the list. Yeah. You know, for me, I, I was really focusing on the Southeast, you know, kind of like more cash flow markets because I own single family homes in California, but I just wanted more cash flow. And well, if, a part, if you can buy apartments, the more cash flow you get, the more you force the appreciation. So it's sure. more in your control. Like Oklahoma, if you buy a single family home, that thing only goes up 3% a year at best. It's a steady eddy market. At best. But if I can, yeah, at best, right? But so I call it an unsexy market, but because of that is less competition. So I focus on small apartment complexes between five to 50 units. And it's usually a mom and pop owner. And like I said, if I can get an apartment, my, my 26 unit, I got for half a million dollars. I negotiate $60,000 in seller repair credit during the hottest real estate market. And they appraise at seventy fifty thousand dollars day one, so that's three hundred thousand dollars right there by me sending out a letter. Wow! Right, and on top of that, I'm the owner hasn't raised rents in five years, mm. so I'm renovating all the units, eight to ten thousand dollars per unit, new kitchen, new flooring, new paint, everything brand new, and I can effectively double the rent from about three fifty to seven hundred, and I've done that already of some of my units. So now my NOI has increased significantly. I think it's going to be worth around 1.3 to 1.5 million. Do a cash out refi. At that point, you know, you pull all your down payment, all your renovation costs, plus extra money, and then you can buy, buy another apartment complex. Right. So to, to me, that's why I started targeting that market. But what kind of led me to mobile home parks, honestly, like any real estate investor, I had shiny object syndrome. Um, you know, honestly, I, I am actually listing it for sale, ironically. But for me, what I really liked about mobile home parks is it's affordable housing. Yeah. Like in my mind, I just said, where could I get 50 acres of land, 200 lot mobile home park for $1.1 million? That's $6,000 per lot. It costs twenty dollars to $30,000 just to build one lot in a mobile home park. So if I, so I bought it. I knew I was buying it right. And I, I was the type to, I kind of jump out of the airplane first and figure my, my parachute on the way down. So I kind of did the same with my mobile home park where I started consuming a lot of podcasts. But I just kind of knew that like at some high level numbers, it was around maybe 30 units or 30 units occupied when I got it. If you can get, and I got for a million dollars, if you get to half, so that's a hundred unit lots filled, it's gonna be worth about 6 million. If it's all filled at 200, that's gonna be worth closer to 10 million. Wow. So I just said, I think I just need to get this park to a certain level. So I got to around 40 to 50. At that point, I think I can sell it for double. So now I'm engaging you know, larger operators who can actually infill 160 lots and have a team and infrastructure to do it. For me, I feel like I brought it as far as I could as just mm -hmm. a single operator. And I just realized my limitation that in order to bring in like three to five homes per month and sell it or rent it out, you need boots on the ground. Like you need to be there with a team. And I think I just don't have the infrastructure, but maybe large syndicators do because they usually have like regional managers 
and build teams that are built out. So they have the economies of scale. And I feel like I don't have that currently. So, you know, for the right price, I'm willing to sell and then hopefully take that and scale my apartment portfolio in Oklahoma City. Because I have a really strong property manager in Oklahoma City. That's why mm. I chose Oklahoma City. And I know that I can easily scale to like 200, 300 units easily and not even be stressed and still work full time. Right. Versus my mobile home park is taking about 80% of my time and energy and money right now, to be honest. So it was just kind of a lesson I learned, but I, I don't regret it. I mean, I learned quite a bit. And in the future, when I want to do mobile home parks again, um, I know how to do it successfully. Right. That's really cool, Stephen. I love that. And I love I love the use of direct mail. You've given really the, the secret sauce. Thanks for breaking that down here yeah. on, on the show today. Talk to me. You, you have... 40 pharmacists, you know, that work for you currently, I think at the hospital, it's a lot of people to manage. And, and like you said earlier, you know, time is your most precious asset and you're kind of, that's, it's not something you can, you can't create more of it. Yes. Talk to me about outsourcing and leveraging and how you have effectively done that with your portfolio. Yeah. So, and as you alluded to, I manage about 40 pharmacists and, you know, pharmacists were very detail oriented and, and borderline OCD. <laughs> that just comes with the profession. And a lot of people have a hard time delegating. Mm -hmm. But to me, you know, when you're running such a large hospital operation and you're running a large real estate portfolio, which translate, you have to be able to delegate and leverage other people and have trust in people. If they can do something 70 to 80% as good as you, it's time to delegate it out, mm -hmm. right? And you gotta view your time on a per hour basis, right? Is it worth my time to do a letter, which cost me $1.50, two bucks and, you know, Per letter, and it takes me eight hours to do it. I'm actually better off working at a pharmacy shift, for example, and I'll make more money and it'll cover that direct mailing campaign. But, you know, for me, um, the first person was finding my who. So they said, Why do I choose Oklahoma City? The only reason I say is because I had a strong property manager there, plain and simple. Nine out of 10 property managers are terrible, unfortunately. And it takes about three to six months to determine if they're good or not. You know, I have a very extensive interview process. And despite that, it's hit or miss, right? Mm -hmm. It's almost like the NFL draft in the first round. It's, it's hit or miss. Right. And um, so because of that, I, I built a system where I have multiple, pro I, I have my main property manager. I have two backups in case my first one does not perform. And I just go down my list, right? First one doesn't perform. I engage my second one. Second one doesn't perform. I engage my third one. And you just wow. go down. It, it's the same thing in the workforce, right? Like if you hire someone, they don't perform. What are you going to do? You're, you're going to give them warnings and then eventually bring in someone to replace them. Right. Slowly. Right. So it's the same. It's very translatable from a W-2 to a pharmacy. And then also, so number one, my property manager, right? So they take care of my renovation for me as well. So they typically serve as my property manager and my general contractor. Mm -hmm. If they don't do both, they can usually refer you to a general contractor that they use. Right. So at that point, you're using referrals and then you do interview them to see if they fit your vision. So from there, if they do that, then... You know, you try them out, but like you said, unfortunately, you don't know till you use them. Like everyone talks a great talk uh, when you're trying to give them a job or give them money, right? Whether that's property manager or caught there. So you just use it and then you test them and say, hey, you know, I know I'm a small fish. I only own 26 units and you're going to renovate it. But if you help me successfully renovate this and raise the income, I'm going to buy more. And guess who's going to manage the next one? Right. It's going to be you. And now I own two. And after the same thing, raise the rents, cash out refi. Now I own four. You know, so that's how you get that slow, slow compounding. So you, you just make it known that you want to scale alongside with them. And also, you know, just be easy to work with. Like this is a skill that I learned. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of investors and business owners, unfortunately, are not easy to work with. But I try to be the easiest person to work with so that when they have a, another owner that wants to sell, who do you think they bring the deal to first? It's always me because they love working with me. I, I always say, well, what would you do? Like, how would you renovate this unit? You tell me. I'm, I'm in California. You're in Oklahoma City. You tell me how to renovate my apartment so that I can spend the least but get the most rent while still looking very nice and very practical, right? right? So it's just, and then people feel appreciated when you do that for them because a lot of people will come in and say, hey, I want, you know, whatever, laminate flooring, granite countertops, but that might work in California, but in Oklahoma, they don't, they don't need it, right? right. So I, I really trust and leverage your skills and experience and, and just know they may mess up, but as long as you learn and pivot for the next time, that's all that matters. So I, I just always kind of had that mindset where, you know, I'm able to leverage and, and same thing, like with my direct mailing campaign, you know, I outsource that all. The only thing I have to do is pull up the data from PropStream, you know, send it over to the company that does it for me. 
I already have a, a copy and paste template that they have, and they've done so many of my letters, they know exactly what I'm doing. So at that point, you know, it's pretty automated. And if I want to take it to the next level, I can hire a virtual assistant and, and they can do it for me too. But, you know, I'm not, not quite there yet. <laughs> so, uh, but there's just ways to outsource yourself out of the job. Because at the end of the day, you know, I buy real estate to have time, freedom and options. But if I'm bogged down with this like massive real estate portfolio that I'm managing myself, that, that sounds miserable to me. For sure. For sure. So that's I love why where I like you, to outsource. Yeah. I love where you said that find the who, you know, which there's a great book on that who, not how. Yeah. Which is, you know, that's 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 music to to my ears, certainly. And I think I also like the the point there when you said, "What would you do?" Right? It's I think that's really cool because you put it, letting them do the thinking for you, and also probably they're going to tell you things that you wouldn't have thought through. It's yeah. not that you're lazy, but it's 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 just just like, hey, what would you do? How 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 would you solve this problem? As opposed to you being the one that always has to think through it, use your mental your cognitive bandwidth, which is yeah. you know limited across this many properties, running a pharmacy, running you know, be the hospital or the director of a pharmacy to hospital. You've got a lot of things to think about. Let other people use their expertise and tell you what they do. I think that's really awesome. Last, uh, last question for you. One of the things that you have built in this process is a, what did you call it? I think we talked about this before we kicked the show off, not your direct mail service, but you built a course, I think, around oh, yeah. acquiring multifamily properties. Yeah. Yeah. No, thanks for that. So I created, uh, it's called I'm Making Multifamily Money. It's basically a, a course that has 120 modules, and it basically just shares my journey and my experience about how I close on an apartment complex from A through Z. Like I said, I literally did everything by myself from A through Z, right? Mm -hmm. So I created, I chose my market, I chose my property manager, I chose my direct mailing campaign, I chose my criteria for that, I created a system and a process. Uh, to basically acquire off-market apartment complexes that typically you negotiate directly with the owner. So I teach everything from A through Z, like how to pick a general contract, how to pick your insurance, how to manage a property manager, how to select your property manager. It's literally A through Z system, just sharing my experiences. And I felt I made a lot of mistakes throughout the past like two, three years. Like I'll be honest, I, I've made you know hundred thousand dollar mistakes, but I hope to kind of condense that into a quick course for people to kind of learn and and not make the same mistakes for me. Right. Because like to me, I wish I had that opportunity where I could have paid money to basically learn and not make these hundred thousand dollar mistakes. Right. So, you know, that, that was kind of my intent. And it was funny. It just kind of started as me wanting to create it uh, to provide to like my, my future kids one day or whenever that happens. But I just say, hey, you know what? Let me just try to bring it out there and see if other people want to learn. Because right. uh, like you said, some people just want to know it's possible to um, scale large real estate portfolio that's 90 units plus while working full time. You know, most of the people in my position, you know, they're typically syndicators and, you know, that's their full time job. And <laughs> so I just want to kind of share my story and, and kind of create that into educational content. You know, it's come, comes very natural for me. You know, I, I work at an academic hospital, so we teach a lot of pharmacy students. Mm. So it just came very organic to me. Um, and I just kind of want to do that as well. And I kind of take the educational approach when, you know, talking with owners, honestly, like a lot of times, you know, when we start negotiating about price, it gets very tense. Sure. But I'll just say like, hey, can you educate me? You know, I'm here in California. You're the person that lives in Oklahoma City. Like, what's a good price for this apartment complex? I, I literally ask that question, like, well, what's a good price? And a lot of them are pretty surprised. A lot of them will just say, hey, you make me an offer. Or, the, or sometimes they'll give me a price. And one guy came and said, hey, I want the task says price. For the property and i know out the gate if it's taxed as price is under market value right already really yeah <laughs> yeah so <laughs> so it's just asking that question it builds that trust but also it helps you learn because sometimes if i came at like hey i want to give you six hundred thousand, but maybe they're okay with half a million right by me just asking the question i could have saved a hundred thousand dollars like right valuable there. questions <laughs> yeah that's the value questions right and right. you know like for me i'm not you know i know what to ask so it's really the power of questions. That, that's funny. I can write a book about that. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Stephen. We'll look for that here in the next year after you get done, uh, you know, selling off your mobile home parks and everything else, the power of questions. There's your, <laughs> there's your title. You, you got your next project right there in front of you. Stephen, thank you for taking the time to come on the show today. This was a blast learning about everything that you've done. Uh, I won't rehash it all here, but it's pretty cool. So I'm just glad to have you on the show today. Thanks for being so direct and so honest with us about your processes and just kind of how you do it. So that's been, that's been really refreshing and, and nice to hear. If our listeners want to get in touch with you, learn more, more about your course and or your direct mail service, what is the best way to do that? 
Yeah, so you can reach out to me at at Stephen D. Nguyen on YouTube and at Making Multifamily Money on TikTok and Instagram. And then once you find my social medias, it has a link to my course. Um, it's published on Teachable and it's called Making Multifamily Money. And from there, you can have access to my course. You can have access to my uh, direct mailing campaign service. So there's three plans. There's bronze, silver, and gold. The bronze is just the course. The silver, I'll do six months of letters for you. And the gold is I'll do 12 months of letters for you. Cool. Because it typically takes about six to 12 months to have that success right. of the direct mailing campaign. Yep, absolutely. Steven, thank you so much. I certainly appreciate it. Have a great rest of your day. You too, Sam. Happy to share my journey. And thank you for everything. Hey, thanks for listening to the How to Scale Commercial Real Estate Podcast. If you can do me a favor and subscribe and leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, whatever platform it is you use to listen, if you can do that for us, that would be a fantastic help to the show. It helps us both attract new listeners as well as rank higher on those directories. So appreciate you listening. Thanks so much and hope to catch you on the next episode.